I'd like to now recognize my colleague, one of the youngest members of Congress, and my good friend uh, from the great state of Illinois, Aaron Schock, for five minutes to uh, offer his remarks. Well, thank you, uh, my good friend from Illinois, for yielding the time. I also want to thank my colleague from Illinois, the distinguished dean of the Illinois uh, Republican delegation, for organizing the tribute to uh, the late Phil Crane. The history of American conservatism, uh, I believe, cannot be written without mentioning Phil Crane. Uh, Phil was born into a large family to stalwart Republican parents. Crane's bedtime stories may well have been the Federalist Papers or the collected works of Edmund Burke. After completing his Ph.D. in history at Indiana University, Phil moved to my hometown of Peoria, Illinois, and he began teaching history, philosophy, and economics at my alma mater, Bradley University. For years, Cranes filled his classes with students captivated by his engaging lectures, and he inspired them by his commitment to America's founding principles. All the while, he worked to build conservative youth movements from the ground up, creating leading groups like the Young America's Foundation, and the American Conservative Union. Together with the, the pan pantheon of American conservatism, William F. Buckley, Ed Fulner, Stan Evans, Phyllis Schafly, Barry Goldwater, and even Ronald Reagan, Crane helped lead the Republican Party out of the wilderness. I don't think it's an overstatement to suggest that a governing Republican majority would never have been possible without the gentleman from Illinois, the Honorable Phil Crane. He was willing to enter the arena to confront the ideologies of socialism, communism, and big government liberalism head on. He armed conservatives with the intellectual firepower they needed to assault the bulwark of big government. And he lived long enough to see the new right emerge strong and resilient. In Congress, he was a fierce advocate for free trade and pro-growth economic reforms and he was a champion of common sense pension reforms that were needed to help the middle class. A few years ago, Phil, on Phil was honored at a dinner here in Washington for his contributions to the conservative movement. That night, surrounded by the men and women he'd worked alongside for more than three decades, he reflected on his earliest memories growing up in a conservative, as a conservative in Illinois. He told the crowd that night how every time when he was a young boy going to visit his grandfather, that his father would make him shake his grandfather's hand. And he would say, son, remember shaking that hand. That hand has shaken the hand of Abraham Lincoln. Phil Crane grew up with a deep sense that he had a responsibility and a calling to keep the party of Lincoln tied to the principles of free enterprise, individual liberty, and peace through strength. Through his entire public service, Phil Crane fought hard for the things he believed in, and along the way, he managed to mentor and train an army of young conservatives to join him. There's something poignant about the fact that Phil Crane lived long enough to see the largest Republican majority in the House of Representatives in his lifetime. He even got to see his home state of Illinois elect a Republican governor, the first time since 1892 that a sitting president's home state governor switched parties. In his eight decades, Phil labored to build the conservative movement. In his final days, he surely sensed that his labors were not in vain. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you.